Kia ora. In this video, we're going to look at the trends, uh, how they change for ionization energy and electronegativity. So what is ionization energy? It's defined as the amount of energy needed to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of atoms in the gas state. So it's important when you write equations that you put a G for the gas symbol and it's one mole of the atom. So it's not a molecule, it's an atom. So how much energy is needed to remove an one mole of electrons from one mole of atoms. So let's look how it changes across a period. And you'll see as I go, you've seen these diagrams before in the previous video, three protons to six protons to nine protons as I go from lithium carbon to um, fluorine. And you can see from the yellow, my ionization energy is increasing. And it's the same as what we had for atomic radius in terms of I am having more protons as I go across a period. Therefore, my nuclear charge is increasing and therefore I'm going to have a stronger force of attraction. My electrons are being added to the same energy level, so they're not being further out. The distance is more or less the same. Um, I have the same amount of shielding from the two inner electrons in this example. And um, my distance, is, if anything, it's not getting bigger, it's actually shrinking because of that stronger attraction from the uh, greater nuclear charge. And therefore, because of that greater attraction, it gets much harder to remove an electron from fluorine than it is to remove one from um, lithium. So you need to explain all these steps. Think of pins, protons, electrons, energy levels, effective nuclear charge, in nuclear charge, D distance, S shielding. How about down a group? The same thing. I've got your hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium. You can see it's much harder to remove an electron from hydrogen than it is to remove from potassium. And it's the same thing. I've got more protons here. So that is as so I should increase the attraction, but my electrons are being added to an energy level further away from the nucleus. And remember, distance has a big effect on that force of attraction, if you watched the previous video. I've also got more shielding. They have only got two electrons that are repelling, uh, causing repulsion between that electron and the nucleus. Here I've got 10, here I've got 18. So there's more repulsion. So my effective nuclear charge is a lot less. And because of, as I say, that distance being so much uh, greater, my ionization energy is going to decrease. It's going to be easier and easier to remove an electron. Now, what about electronegativity? First of all, what is it? It measures the ability of a bonded atom to attract the bonding electrons. So it's actually an attraction. A lot of students think of electronegativity, they think of electrons, negative repulsion, but it's actually an attractive force. We're looking at the attraction of that nucleus on the bonding electrons. So in this case of hydrogen fluoride, it's how strongly does hydrogen attack, attract those bonding electrons compared to fluorine. Notice uh, we're talking about bonding electrons and not valence electrons. And notice that we're also talking about electronegativity as a property of an element. So I'm not saying the electronegativity of HF. I'm talking about the electronegativity of hydrogen attracting those electrons and fluorine attracting those electrons. Because each element has its own number of protons in an electron's distance that will affect things. So here's an example of carbon is further to the left of oxygen in the periodic table. In the same row, carbon has a greater, uh, sorry, has a lower electronegativity, a smaller attraction on the bonding electrons um, because it's got fewer protons than what oxygen has and all those other steps that you need in your explanation. And here it's the other way around with hydrogen, where hydrogen can't attract them as strongly as carbon can. So now these are all the steps you need to explain. So you've seen these diagrams before of the attraction, and it's the same thing. More protons, more nuclear charge. Just talk about bonding electrons now and not valence. The electrons being added to the same energy level. We've got the same amount of shielding. And because that distance is decreasing, uh, a bit because of that greater nuclear charge, 
we're going to have a much stronger attraction and therefore electronegativity increases as we go from lithium to carbon to fluorine. And down a group, hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, we see the same thing as what we saw in the previous one. More protons, more nuclear charge. Valence electrons being further away from the nucleus, so these a small attraction and remember it's the valence electrons that bond and therefore that attraction to the bonding electrons will decrease because not only are they further away so that's the distance but also you've got more inner electrons causing um, rep repulsion and therefore shielding and therefore the effect of nuclear charge is less so um, Goodbye.